Hey Trailblazers, welcome back to the Declarative Academy, your go-to space for mastering Salesforce one module at a time. In today's session, we're diving into one of Salesforce's most powerful automation features, the approval process. If you've ever asked yourself, how can I make sure the right people approve a record before it moves forward? Then you're in exactly the right place. By the end of this video, you'll be able to do two key things. First, you'll be able to explain what an approval process is and understand the main parts that make it work. And second, you'll know how to plan and automate a real business process using an approval process in Salesforce. So let's jump in. Let's, so what exactly is an approval process? At its simplest, an approval process is Salesforce's way of automating how records get approved. You decide who needs to approve something, in what order, and what should happen before, during, and after that approval takes place. Think of it as a digital approval chain. For example, imagine an employee submits a time off request. Salesforce can automatically route that request to their manager for approval. If it's approved, Salesforce might update the employee's record and send a confirmation email. If it's rejected, it could send a polite notification back explaining why. No need for manual emails or reminders. Everything is handled automatically and tracked within Salesforce. It's a clean, reliable workflow that keeps things moving without the admin hassle. Let's walk through a simple example to see how it all comes together. Imagine someone in HR creates a request to open a new position at their company. Here's what happens behind the scenes. First, we have the initial submission actions. When the request is submitted, Salesforce automatically locks the record. This stops anyone else from editing it while it's waiting for a decision. You can also add extra actions here, things like sending an email alert, updating a field, creating a task, or even sending a message to another system. Next come the approval steps. Each step defines who needs to approve and in what order. In this case, the first approver might be the employee's direct manager. If the manager rejects the request, Salesforce runs the final rejection actions. For example, updating the approval status to rejected. But if the manager approves, the request moves on to the CEO for a second round of approval. Finally, we have the final approval actions. When the CEO gives the go ahead, Salesforce updates the record to approved, unlocks it so it can be edited again, and automatically notifies the employee. Every stage is tracked and recorded, so you always know who approved what and when a complete transparent approval trail from start to finish. Now that you've got a clear picture of how an approval process works, let's plan one together. Before you build any automation in Salesforce, it's always worth taking a moment to map things out. You want to be crystal clear on what you're trying to achieve before diving into setup. In this example, our goal is simple. We want to make sure that any opportunity with a discount greater than 40% gets manager approval before it's finalized. Here's what we'll need to make that happen. To track each opportunity's discount percent, we'll create a custom field on the opportunity object. To track the approval status, we'll add another custom field called approval status. To trigger approval when the discount is more than 40%, we'll create an approval process on the opportunity. To notify managers automatically, we'll build an email template. To update the record once it's approved, will add an approval action that updates the approval status field. And here's a quick pro tip. In many real world Salesforce setups, you might use the standard discount field on each opportunity product instead. You can then roll that information up to the opportunity using a roll up summary field. That approach gives you more flexibility for reporting and validation down the line, especially if your business handles multiple products per deal. All right, Trailblazers, let's test your knowledge with a couple of quick questions. Question one, in an approval process, the parts you define are A, steps, approvers, and actions. B, requests, approvers, and approvees. C, submission actions and CEO approvals. D, submissions, authorizations, and lightning actions. The correct answer is A, steps, approvers, and actions. These three make up the core structure of every approval process. Steps define the order and logic. Approvers are the people reviewing and actions are what Salesforce does automatically at each stage. Question two, true or false? There's no reason to plan an approval process before you start creating it. 
A, true B, false. The correct answer is B, false. Always plan before building. Mapping out your fields, criteria and actions makes the setup smoother and prevents costly rework later. Let's recap what we've learned. Approval processes automate how records get reviewed and approved. Each process includes entry criteria, approval steps, and automated actions. Planning ahead helps you identify which fields, templates, and updates you'll need. Once built, Salesforce takes care of routing, locking, notifications, and updates. No manual chasing required. That's efficient, scalable automation in action. And that wraps up our session on customizing how records get approved in Salesforce. If you found this walkthrough helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Declarative Academy, and drop a comment below.